Okay, so let's continue from the introduction to Transformers uh, from the last lecture and let's dive a bit deeper into it. Okay, so uh, introduction section of Hugging Face NLP course, chapter one and subsection, uh, how do Transformers work? So before we go into Transformers, we have to, you know, know its history. We always start with history, uh, but we we are not actually generally told why. So the reason history of anything is important is always there are very few, very few key drivers to anything. So as long as those most important parts, which are disproportionately important, as long as you understand things from them and uh, that as a foundation, everything is built on, then you uh, your learning is easiest. If you start with, you know, somewhere in the middle, you're going to struggle a lot because you are missing how it all started. You have to start from there. Okay. So here, this is these are the architectures along the history of transformer architectures. And out of them, we need to know this history to understand its two most important innovations. First, GPT as an architecture. And second, BERT as an architecture. This was a very important innovation which allowed all of us, okay, which allowed all of us to do natural language processing. And see, the thing is, uh, Natural language processing, deep learning uh, has this one weird quirk. Being rich is great. Okay, this is going to come off as weird thing. But see, companies like Google, Facebook, they have access to a lot of data and a lot of money to spend on uh, computational power to train on that data. So, uh, you know, not, not any individual can actually achieve it. And getting access to the data is also a quite chaotic thing. So, what happened is uh, these architectures, GPT and BERT, which were the most important architecture, they were done by uh, OpenAI company and Google. So, both giants, okay, both giants and they were constantly innovating is like Google, Microsoft, they were innovating, you know, each doing some important contributions, but all of them, you know, they distilled to these two most important architectures, okay. And uh, we all know how the AI wars has come out. We all know OpenAI is so, uh, you know, it's chat GPT is amazing and uh, Google is still trying to catch up. Uh, so, uh, the latest architecture, latest thing everybody knew was ChatGPT based out of GPT-3, which was originally just a scaled up version, you know, throw more data, throw more compute at the same solution. Uh, so, it's it's GPT, it's, it's rooted in GPT. And all the Google's innovation things, they're all going to be rooted in BERT. And they're just a tiny bit different from each other. So, that's why we need to know history. <laughs> We understand what gets evolved from where, whatever innovation is made, we understand what is that small delta they have done. Okay, right now, I am trying to build my own understanding of GPT and BERT. I am not there yet. I am still reading the research papers. I am going to upload that video too. But you need to know this so that you can chart the path. How to start learning? So next week, I am going to start on these GPT and BERT research papers. Okay. So that's why you need to know the history. Details of these things you can, uh, you know, find. Generally, important thing to know is in all of these models, the most important paths I, I you know, I showed in that image was GPT and BERT. Let's find GPT and BERT here in this path. You'll find GPT to be here. And BERT you will find here, this guy. So you'll see these are two different paths. OpenAI chose this path. Google chose this path. Two different approaches. And only two approaches have been tried. Everything else is a sub-improvement of just these two approaches. Three approaches. And to be really honest, to get the same accuracy, I'm sure 
there are 10 20 different approaches remaining to be found that is why deep learning as a field it rewards innovation a lot we need innovators, but we have no innovators. That's the unfortunate truth. We have people who just do changes to these things, do a tiny bit improvement and think they've done a lot. No. Improvement is there if we make improvements at the fundamental level. I'm not saying I've done any improvement. I'm just saying I think that is where improvement should be, not any dumb tiny improvement. Okay. So let's try to do this. I'll try to aim this. And if not, I would have failed trying to innovate where it counts. <laughs> so these are the two parts. All of the innovations, they evolve from these two things. Okay. So these two are very important research papers to master. So then let's we go into a bit more detail of transformers as general architectures now. So you see, we saw in this tree, everything distills generally kind of like to, uh, in this path, decoder only, it all is similar to GPT, approximately. And here in this uh, encoder only path, it all kind of similar to changes of BERT. Okay. So here, what are those things? These, these have been trained in a very interesting way. Okay. You'll find it to be really, really funny. So, innovation was first on GPT-1 and on BERT, right? So, I've opened these uh, models which have been uploaded on Hugging Face. So, OpenAI's model, uh, which they released in 2018. Google's model, which they released in 2018. Uh, so, if you check, I've highlighted these things. This model is trained on just 7,000 unpublished books. <laughs> so, you can see how small. Check this. You will find this has been trained on just 11,000 unpublished books and English Wikipedia data. Again, very small data. Internet has such a huge text. Google and Microsoft have access to so much data. They only use subset because this AI approach which we do, you know, to learn, it is actually an incredibly brute force way of uh, getting things to work. So, we have these two paths. They are highly inefficient paths. Nobody talks about inefficiency. These are highly inefficient paths. Very few research has gone to innovations which talks about, you know, compressing them getting them better, you know, understanding things so that we can do them better. So, this is an important milestone in history of Transformers, which is distillation, distill bird. So, you know, these were the three uh, uh, important history things and going back to Transformers as language models. So, what these companies did, they took a very small data and on that data, they kept training their model, which was a large language model. Okay. What they did is very interesting. Okay. So, you see what is available in this data. Only 7,000, you know, unpublished books from different, you know, genres, adventure, fantasy, romance, you know, all different genres. So, just text. And ha, ha, what do we learn from that? So, they did very smart thing. What they did is, you know what? Let's do this thing. Let's try to, you know, take just one word out of a single sentence and try to predict that word from all other words. You see, this is a possible problem. We have taken a sentence and converted that sentence into, this is the input, this is the output, and see how good you are. So, you see, they did a very smart thing. Just random text data if you take and you keep training the model in this way, you will get something. Okay, that's what they did and it worked. Okay, whoever does it first is the winner, right? So, if you do something better, you know, they, this is chance. This field rewards innovation a lot. That's why learn to think in an innovative way. So, they either did this or taking left hand side all the words and predicting the next word. So, you can, you know, take any sentence and uh, convert that sentence into this way a lot. 
and just keep training on the data you have available and eventually it will learn something right it has taken a lot of possible you know intelligence which is present in the data it has taken all of them and it has learnt some relationship and that's what this does all of these transformers what they do is they take such data keep going through this data even though it, it sounds weird but as long as we keep going through this data again and again and again and again on a huge model this is an important thing on a huge model what was observed okay you know just let's think about this just logically we take a huge model huge model what does it mean extremely large number of parameters and we try to you know uh, learn things to minimize error and save that information in these parameters more complex the parameters more number of parameters more intelligence we can save in it and we keep saving something we don't know what but the thing is it it eventually learns something and it starts working and that's what has happened we got lucky this is called as emergence okay uh, scaling laws at certain thing uh, we suddenly found that if you just keep feeding it data and make model larger it kind of like achieves a good enough accuracy and that thing which we achieved was in these transformer models that's why all of these models are huge all of these models are, have been incrementally been trained on bigger because you know first model first model was trained on small data just increase the data that dumb it's that dumb you know keep increasing data keep doing improvements and you get a more intelligence in the model you have trained okay and that entire intelligence which we kind of like uh, do through this training on large amount of data progressively you see this is what we are doing as time passes we take more and more data we extract more intelligence into larger and larger model so we build on top of these things everything is built on top of each other they all evolve from the source so if you want to learn all of these complicated things you have to start from the two main paths one is gpt one is bert and things evolved incrementally from there they change they you know improve by a tiny bit so when you understand the root node and then you understand tiny improvements then all of these things you can easily understand so we have kept increasing the size and increasing the data so that's what this architecture uh, you know is doing and if we do not share whatever we have learned this will be you know everyone will have to spend a lot of money trying to do this this training is very expensive so that's why hugging face is so amazing what hugging face has done it's just mind blowing how they have been able to achieve i mean they have my huge fucking respect because they made the sharing these models so easy how easy you know just go to the website go to models and you have all the models just companies just release whatever they have made open source you can just take anything refine on top of it whatever improvements you know and you can build a much better model only limit is your creativity and intelligence and uh, how much you can innovate and that's so amazing because these companies they simply generally are doing brute force improvements they are not doing that much creative thinking so we have a chance to kind of like take this which hugging face has enabled take this it's so easy to get started and then you know learn how to build on top of it and then easily get in front of people with our skills so this this transformers is just amazing library it's <laughs> just amazing so uh this this is what uh this chapter goes through so when we take a untrained model and kind of like do do this weird stuff we did either predict a, a a word any random word you have taken out from a sentence from rest of the uh, words of that sentence or 
take you know anything and just predict the next word so you can take a sentence convert it into this format and we have taken a random data set and converted it into a problem why do we this random shit that humans are not needed to label the data we have taken random data transformed it into a, a fairly intelligent problem and kept training on it and we have gotten to a high intelligence <clears throat> So we take a model, we kind of like train on this large data, huge number of trainings, companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, and some companies do it. And then that model, which has a lot of uh, uh, intelligence in it, now that is available to us. So all of these things, you know, all of these architecture innovations, we not only have the innovation, we also have the weights, the answer the model with that great intelligence if we can just let's say combine this is innovation with this innovation with that innovation with that innovation maybe build two three more innovations on top of it and improve specific data you know train it in a distinct way i can get a lot more intelligence so ready-made answers are available these pre-trained language models they are available and then on top of that we just uh, uh, whatever, there are many ways to improve. So fine tuning is a method, which is, we kind of like take this base model, which has been already trained uh, a lot of money, which would have been required to do, get it into this pre-trained model stage. We don't need here. They, they, uh, they have made a mistake. They still have, uh, same amount of money here. This should be just very minimal amount of money required to go from pre-trained model to fine-tuned model. Very little amount of money. So we add just subset of data and you know all the innovation we can. And we get a high quality model compared to this. So this part of the process, these big companies do. And this fine-tuning part, and you know, improving on it further in you know, this thing way, this we as engineers and researchers can do. So this is the transformers thing. And uh, then we go into the architecture part, but I think the video has gotten quite long. So I'm gonna just cut here. So this will be how to transform our work. It, this is uh, until, uh, this transfer learning part and I'm going to go into architecture into next video.